Hi Church, good morning, this is Pastor Mladen Krklec. Welcome to Miljura Save the Adventist Church worship. Whether you watch this on Friday evening or Saturday morning at some stage, we welcome you and we wish you a happy summer. <speaking in Spanish> church for big group session so we are asking everybody to find a house church where you can worship connect and connect with God and with each other of course as well we thank you for all leaders who are already organizing some of these groups and we hope that perhaps you will be one of those people who will say I can organize a few people from 2 to 20 right now we can to a public space or at home as well and perhaps we can gather someone pray with someone study with bible someone perhaps watch this sermon and then later on look at the questions from the passage that we will be studying this saturday we also want to ask you to pray for the last exams that our year 12 students are going through and we want to congratulate to those of you who are finishing year 12, who have just perhaps one or two more exams and who will be doing this next week, we pray for you that you finish it well. And we also want to have something for you. We have started already delivering these wonderful kilts to each of our year graduates from year 12. We have five graduates. This is organized by our church for five of them and made mostly by Julie Hancock who is an amazing person very generous with her time and, and uh, talents and so on and over there you will find also a little dedication that will be yours to keep why are we doing those quick kilts? well we are doing this because we want to tell you dear graduates well done on finishing year 12 it's uh, taken a lot of effort it's taken a lot of grit and strength to finish year 12 in 2021 you guys have had it very tough you're going to school in 2021 2020 and 2021 in the time of covid wasn't easy we recognize this and we salute you and say well done we also wish to say the best we wish you the best for the future and we hope to gather somehow to celebrate this, this success until then these skills will be our way of saying we want to wrap you up with our congratulations with our love with our prayers and say how proud we are of you but whatever you do remember that your Miljura Seventh Adventist Church loves you prays for you and we are with you and we cheer for you.
now it lives in our shed because our house is so small at the moment and it's full of love every now and then I go to it open it and read some of the letters in it now this bag is full of hand written letters from time when I was still a teenager until recently emails tend to be lost but handwritten letters was something that I kept from postcards to Christmas cards birthday cards but especially handwritten letters that friends used to send me from my childhood from my school's times was something I really appreciated and there is this period of time when I was in national service for one year when I would get a letter this would be not just a piece of correspondence but it was a bomb of energy courage and appreciation in my life imagine yourself going to army as a 19 year old boy leaving behind your family your loving family your church your friends and going into an environment that is completely strange to you your hair is gone now you look like everybody else you are stripped of your unique clothing that you love that you picked and given this kind of olive green uniform that you are wearing around now you all look the same you do these drills you they teach you about not just communism propaganda but also how to fight and you look forward to the next 365 days that you had to serve your national service for as a specially anxious and dark time in your life but in this time that i had to say was probably the darkest time of my life i would receive handwritten letters from my friends they would be friends from church from high school from my childhood from people i met just before the army and every time when you would in the army receive one of these handwritten letters you would feel like born again you would be perhaps feeling tired or demoralized somebody would definitely yell at you that day somebody would make you feel very very small they would make you march and jump and uh, run and drill with weapons and clean and doing meaningless tasks at one point of time you would get a letter it's a moment where you realize that someone has sat down and had thoughts for nothing else but for you somebody has taken time to write some words with you in mind and as a soldier it meant so much it felt like somebody would take a jug full of appreciation courage and energy and pour it into you and you would feel like a person again you would feel like somebody believes in you you would feel like you would feel like somebody knows you like somebody appreciates you like somebody is connected to you again you're not just a number you're not just a soldier you are again a person I am again Mladen. I remember who I used to be. I remember what we used to talk. Army is this time where you're just trying to survive and then a letter comes and it fills you with so much energy. It was absolutely amazing time. I felt now that each of these letters was like a anointment anointment of love and appreciation and connection to the memory of who I really am what my mission really is and who I want to be in my life not just a soldier 
but appreciated friend, family member, church member, a person who does have future beyond this darkest moment of my life. If you were one of those who sent me a letter that my family or friends, thank you so much. It really did lift me up. perhaps like me sometimes in the army he would have felt perhaps discouraged perhaps tired perhaps without enough energy last time we read in John 11 about how he came to Bethany where Martha Mary and Lazarus lived and they had this long lasting friendship for a while now he came this time to the Bethany because Lazarus died and as he is approaching their house, first Martha and then Mary come to Jesus and they say, Lord, if you were here, our brother would not have died. Jesus reassures them that their brother will raise and that he tells them, I am resurrection and life. That's a beautiful message. He then resurrects Lazarus. And instead of this being a great jumping board of people having faith generally in Judea some people believe in him and some others go to the Pharisees and they start plotting to kill him they even started plotting to kill Lazarus because now he is a symbol of Jesus power and he is a witness of what Jesus can do he can resurrect people from death and they are afraid they are afraid that the Romans will even further push them down and instead of trusting God instead of trusting Jesus they are afraid of what man can do to them it would have not felt comfortable for Jesus where he shows his best resurrecting someone in the life and still there is not as much faith in people as he would have hoped and then again there is this feeling of dread in his soul because he's now going to Jerusalem where he will be, be arrested, be judged, be flogged, be whipped, finally being crucified and die. And all of this is accumulating in his soul. And at this point we come to the John chapter 12. John chapter 12 and we will read verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from death. They prepared a dinner for him there, which Martha helped serve. Lazarus was one of those who were sitting at the table with Jesus. Then Mary took a whole pint of a very expensive perfume made of pure nard, poured it on Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The sweet smell of the perfume filled the whole house. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, the one who was going to betray him said, Why wasn't this perfume sold? For 300 silver coins. And the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and would help himself from it. Leave her alone. Let her keep what she has for the day of my burial. You will always have poor people with you. 
But you will not always have me. Such a short story, but impactful, I believe, for Jesus and for Mary and definitely for us today as well. Mark chapter 14 further complements this story and saying that assuredly that I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Because it's important moment in Jesus' ministry. It shows not just how to encourage God, but how to truly be devoted to him and how to worship him truly. Wherever the gospel is preached in the world, the Bible says this story of many of Mary will be told. In his hour of increasing loneliness, and growing isolation, our Lord sees in this woman's offering the very marks of the kingdom of God, self-forgetfulness and self-denial. Her unrestricted love for him in the pouring out of her life saving is nothing short of a heaven-sent light on the dark route to Calvary. In the Gospels of Mark and Luke, the preceding verses speak of chief priests and the scribes' plot to put Jesus to death. And he knows that. He, the light of the world, the word through which everything was created, this love incarnated, this Messiah which was expected, cannot escape the political interview of small-minded people who are twisting the facts, deliberately misunderstanding Jesus' mission and making him into a villain. No matter what Jesus said, they decided already they would kill him. The beauty of Mary's action stands out against the dark background of opportunism into you and betrayal it was coming from all sides into jesus life the unexpectedness of the deed only serves to highlight the unloving atmosphere of the simons the host of this feast of simon's circle of friends everything about mary's behavior spoke of unmeasured generosity in which this spontaneity of love had free way. It would be all too easy for us to condemn the embarrassment felt by the other guests at the dinner as hypocritical, since perhaps we too would have been embarrassed at this scene of Mary first putting this precious oil perfume on Jesus' feet and then wiping it with her own hair. It would be too easy for us to sweep aside the critical comments coming since we too would have been critical of wasted money at this occasion. For I doubt if any of us would see the virtue in pouring out one's entire possessions in one decisive act. And if we too would have been surprised and shocked, can we safely conclude that we need to be taught by Jesus and by Mary's action? Perhaps something we can apply to our lives. Can we agree that our current feelings of what's appropriate and what kind of worship we give to God is lacking and need to be informed by God's word about how to do it. Like the guests at this feast, we would have poured perhaps a few drops, not the whole alabaster flask. We would have given just enough for the occasion in much the same way as we calculate our weekly given to the Lord's work. How much do you give to Lord's work? A little bit? Much? Nothing? 
whenever you feel like something. We know how it feels to be prudent, as we call it, in giving to God's word. And so we too would have easily condemned Mary in what he did, in what she did. Measured giving, not too much, not too little, but a respectable, passable offering is what we have in mind as we weekly give to God uh, an amount that will never break our jar or our bank. On closer examination of the story, we are convinced that something else embarrassed the guests. Not so much the waste of this precious oil a perfume, but something which motivated and transcended the, gen the generosity of the gift, namely the adoration which lay behind it. This was a total self-abandon which lifted the giver above the mean realm of mathematical calculation into a realm where commitment refuses to be held back by caution. Her self-giving highlighted everybody else's self-centeredness. Her self-abandonment made a mockery of their self-interest. While they waited to see what would happen, what would Jesus say, how to get this elephant in the room, out of the room. Mary had thoughts for no one but Jesus. It was a total consecration, consecration of the personality. It is the giving forth of all that was best in oneself that Mary did. Just as the perfume could no longer remain sealed up within the jar, nor could Mary remain sealed up with herself, because Jesus has just a little bit before, a few days or weeks, resurrected her brothers back to life. He has given them all a little picture of what will happen to all of them should they continue their friendship with Jesus. And her heart was full of thankfulness, not by some vain faith or blind beliefs, but by seeing the facts of who Jesus is and what he will do for each one of us. That's what made her so consecrated and so committed to Jesus. Simon Friends had learned that the art of keeping their emotions on a tight leash, tight rein, they were reserved in a manner as became those who were making their mark in the world. They had to be behaving and saying words in a certain manner without two big expressions or emotions. Their friendships were those of the select circle of like-minded holy people who would avoid the sinners and the excited people. They worshipped in their minds God in truth and intellect. They would scornfully look at the people who rejoiced as Jesus' compassion and love and condemned them as wishy-washy people. <laughs> public expression of emotion were in poor taste and were not to be encouraged. Their carefully cultivated reserve and their emotional frigidity ensure that the jar which contained their par perfume was never broken and the true affection never shown. Like the unbroken jar they were to be admired, but nothing more. No real feelings, no real adoration, no real consecration or commitment came out of them at all. No joy, no broken heartedness for the plight of others, no empathy, no compassion, no laughter, no love. 
Simon's friends remarked on the waste of the ointment when it could have fetched a good price on the open market. Those onlookers would not consider themselves to be mean-spirited. They were realists, they would have termed themselves. Economy of resources was the bottom line. What they did not understand was an outpouring which could never be measured in monetary terms, a generosity and devotion that had no equal in the marketplace. Leave her alone, Jesus said, for she has done a beautiful thing to me. This was a beautiful action that is nothing less than love lifted to a fine art. The very same beauty that inspires great music and fine poetry, a love which transforms each lowly duty into an act of consecrated service. Not only has she committed a beautiful act, says Jesus, but she has done all that she possibly could. I think that in our most honest moments, we would agree that it is here that we fall short of total commitment to the Lord. Doing all that we can has to include the routine, the unexcited and the unspectacular. Giving 100% in time and talent, though we never get credit for it or make the headlines or and perhaps are not getting disheartened when others get the honor of what we have achieved. Doing all that we can means taking our eyes off those things and actions that we find attractive and interesting and fixing our mind on Jesus, making him alone the object of our service, the goal of our life. When we do that, we are given the grace and insight to transform dull duty into happy involvement. To argue that the poor will suffer because the ointment was not first sold in the market and then given to the poor is simply not true. The truth is that until men and women love the Lord the way this woman did, Mary did, the resources needed to save mankind will never be released. Mary broke her jar. She broke that which holds most people away from the full devotion to the Lord. Self-centeredness and self-interest. She forgot herself and turned her full attention to the Lord. She started living a life of self-sacrifice. She saw the Lord raise her brother Lazarus from the death and she rightfully understood that here before her was life and resurrection, the Creator and the Savior, the only one worth the worship, worth us living for and worth our adoration. She did a beautiful thing, Jesus said. She did all that she could. In doing so, she lightened the dark road to Calvary, easing the awful loneliness of betrayal, mockery and crucifixion. Just like my friends poured into me courage and optimism and hope by writing me all the letters while I was in the army, so Mary too did it in a much better way for Jesus. She wrote to him a letter which she, he still kept and it simply said, I am yours Jesus my money, my devotion, my time. I will serve you 
because I see you as my only Savior. What about you? If you were in the room, which position would you be in? Position in one of the guests of respect and honor, judging someone who is so devoted? Or would you be in Mary's position on her knees, worshiping her Lord and Savior? Perhaps it's time now for you to bring your jar and break it for your God. And perhaps you too can start a journey with me of this forgetting this continual self-interest and self-importance. Perhaps we too can worship God and by breaking our jar of self-interest and self-importance, we can finally worship Him with everything that we have. We too can give Him our all. I too pray that we would not just read about Mary, but we would be Mary. I invite you, in fact, to at home now either join us into the questions which we will put at the screen in our Facebook page or read this passage again using this simple guide that we have given to everyone discovery Bible reading and ask questions in this passage that is that are good for you that you will grow with within the group that you are worshiping in or in your home but grow the way G the Mary did recognizing his power recognizing Jesus' identity and recognizing that she wants to fully, but just partially, be His. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Mary's story has gone to all the world just like you have promised. And today I want to be like Mary. I want to be truly, fully committed to your cause, to you, giving you my time, giving you my devotion, giving you my finances, giving you my talents, giving you everything that I have. Just as Mary has given her all, so I want to give my all to you because nothing in this world is really mine. But if we have you, then we have everything. I'm reminded of this text Seek the first, the kingdom of God, and everything else shall be added to you, knowing that this is mantra of all of us who want to follow you in, from this world into the next, but who also want to live right now for you, like Mary did. May we give you praise and honor and worship as individuals, as a church, wherever we are. I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you for watching this Majora Seventh Adventist Church sermon. Have a wonderful and happy Sabbath. Whose love is young.